Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Todd coming at you. Hope you guys are having an awesome day out there. Listen, uh, on the other side of me talking, we have uh, an awesome health health coach, uh, Ariel Santerico, out of the New Jersey area. All right, she's going to be dropping some jewels, diamonds, and pearls when it comes to our overall health. All right, so you guys make sure to listen to it all because once again, this woman is so so smart, and brilliant. Okay, and uh, just just uh, just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to health and wellness and uh, she's out there in the trenches everybody so after the interview and during the interview she will be giving you her information so you make sure that you reach out to her because i'm definitely going to be reaching out to her with my clients all right because that's once again how knowledgeable and how much i trust her all right so you guys take care and uh be good peace What's going on, everyone? This is Todd coming at you from another episode of Living Your Best Life. And I hope you guys are definitely living your best life today. It's Greensboro here, and the weather is beautiful. Oh my God, it's a nice blue sky outside. It's about 70-something degrees. And I hope you are feeling that where you are today, because like I said, right about now, I am definitely feeling the good, beautiful weather. So, of course, on our show, Living Your Best Life, uh, how can I put it? Uh, this is a show where we introduce or invite health and wellness and, 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 and fitness professionals or either people in the financial world, anyone that's out there helping people live a, a, a better life onto the show to talk about what they do and how their particular profession is helping people once again live their best life. And so that's what we do, everyone. Every single week, we try to do it. Some weeks, we're not able to, you know, do it. But mostly every week, we try to get a guest on to come and impact the world. So wherever you are in the world while you're watching this, uh, I know today uh, you're going to be just totally filled. Because my business partner, my new business partner, this lady here, Miss Ariel Santerico, and uh, I had to, I had a little, I had, you know, when we first kind of met, you know, I was struggling to how to, you know, pronounce the name because <laughs> I have my way of pronouncing it. And she was like, eh, and that's still, maybe I still got it wrong. I don't know. Maybe I, <laughs> who knows? But, you know, I, you know, she is a health coach. And, you know, one of the things that uh, I really gained from her was her passion, especially on a particular topic. And we're gonna to be talking about that today. Um, I won't spill it right now. You're gonna to have to wait and find out what we're gonna be talking about, but her passion for what she does. And she is one of those individuals that lived out of health and wellness books and learning about health and wellness and just, just a total, you know, open book of just sharing what she knows about health and wellness. And I want to thank you so much, Ariel, for hanging out uh, this afternoon uh, on Living Your Best Life. You are welcome. It's great to be here, Todd. Thank you so much for awesome. inviting me. I love the topic, uh, the title of your of your podcast, because as you know, um, I am the owner of Living Well with Ariel. So it's all about living we well, go. right? And that's what we're here for. Mm. <laughs> living well with Ariel. <laughs> and when you told me that, I was like, perfect. <laughs> I was like, that's absolutely perfect. So, you know, Ariel, uh, like I say, you are a health coach. And uh, a lot of times when it comes to uh, getting to certain levels or spaces in areas in life, be it health or wealth, people have to go through some things and all. And uh, from your story, yes, you had an interesting journey on your way to wellness and you're on your way to health. So I would love to know a little bit more about who you are, your health journey, and most importantly, what made you become a health coach? I would love to share that. It's actually become my mission to share my story in the hopes that other people will hear it and be inspired, um, you know, to seek out uh, health and wellness for themselves. So first and foremost, uh, my name is Ariel Sanchirico. And yes, that you did pronounce that right. I am currently live and work out of Middlesex County, New Jersey. I am a health coach. I'm also a supplement specialist and a women's wellness advocate. Those are, uh, that's a very important important topic for me. I hope we'll discuss a little bit later on. I did receive my health coaching certification in 2017 
from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, that is a New York-based health coach training school. They're actually the pioneers 30 years ago. They were one of the first and foremost health coach uh, training um, schools in, in existence, founded mm -hmm. by Joshua Rosenthal. Um, I, I feel very honored and lucky to have become a graduate from there. They offer a very robust training program. So even though I officially earned my health coaching certification in 2017, I can tell you though, Todd, I have been a health coach for, without dating myself now, at least 25 years without wow, even yeah. knowing what health yeah, coaching yeah. was. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing it for, I've been doing it intuitively now for that amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, and the way it started for me was, well, I've always, since childhood, I've always been very intuitive. I have always felt um, that life was sacred and always felt this interconnection to my body and how special it is and the design of us as humans and how, how we are alive here on this earth and what it means for our bodies to carry us through, right? This journey of life. I've always felt that way. And I always tried to be healthy and look at life from a nourishing and protective standpoint and, and relate that to others. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until my early 20s when a significant incident happened to me that impacted the rest of my life and changed the course and the direction of my life, which I now look back on and see that it was almost uh, most definitely a divine intervention because this is something that I was really meant to do. Mm -hmm. So I was in my early 20s and I was walking through uh, it, the sand dunes in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, New York, which is a very unlikely place you would think that you would find ticks that carry Lyme disease. But unfortunately, I did get bit by a tick and I succumbed to Lyme disease. Now, at the time, I had no idea that I was sick at all. Um, but a month later, started to experiencing horrendous symptoms that went on and on. I went from doctor to doctor, and I'm sure people out there listening, they must have similar stories. I think most of us do. Where something happens to you, you become unwell, and you're seeking help, but there's nobody there. They don't understand. They don't find it. They misdiagnosed it. So I went to all of these doctors, and this is the most important decade of your life, right? It sets the stage for the rest of your life, your 20s. You're supposed to be out there having fun, partying, college graduation, and all of that. I was sick, so sick for most of it. Mm -hmm. I remember being in one particular doctor's office. This was the turning point for me, and I had been through so much by this point medical exams, blood work. Um, they just kept bouncing me around from specialist to specialist. And one doctor said to me, you know what you need? You need to go home and take a walk through the park and then have a glass of milk. <laughs> and I looked at him and I thought of what I've been through, the, the myriad of physical and mental and emotional symptoms that basically destroyed my life at 25 years old. And I said, this is crazy. Somebody's mm -hmm. telling me to go take a walk in the park. And let me tell you, Lyme disease is no walk in the park. <laughs> right, right. No pun intended. It would, no, it was a very serious, very debilitating time of my life. I could even say to you candidly that the experience broke me uh, physically, psychologically, on so many levels. I became a shell of who I should have been in my 20s. Mm. I made a decision in that doctor's office that no, I'm, I'm not going to drink a glass of milk and go away. There's something happening to my body. I'm very in tune with my body and I'm going to find out what it was. So this, this epiphany happened in conjunction with a friend who said, you know, your symptoms, I, there's a doctor. I live out in New Jersey at the time I was living in New York. So a friend in New Jersey said, your symptoms sound like Lyme disease to me. Mm. I had never heard of Lyme disease. I went to an infectious disease doctor and was finally at 28 years old, or almost eight years later, diagnosed properly. And we did begin antibiotic treatment. As everyone knows, that's standard for Lyme disease diagnosis. However, the Lyme disease became what they call disseminated in my body. And unfortunately, it affected almost every system, every gland um, in, my, in my body. Fortunately for myself, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I was very healthy. So that was what kept me going. But I was on many levels, very ill. And I said, you know what? I am going to heal myself. I, mm. there was no internet, of course, right? In the 19, now this was now 19, early nineties. There was no mm -hmm. internet. So the next best thing to do, I went to every bookstore 
Remember when bookstores were the big rage and yes, you would go yes, in there, yes, everybody yes. was hanging out, having their coffee. I would be sitting on the floor with all of these health and wellness books spread around me and flipping page after page. And you know what, Todd, the more I read, the more I was fascinated and encouraged and inspired. And I was like, I, I, I was filled. I was, you know what I was filled with? I'll tell you the key word was hope where the mm. doctors at the time, they didn't offer me that, which was more important than any antibiotic or treatment was hope. Mm -hmm. Nobody had that for me, but I found hope in the pages of these books on alternative medicine, healing disease through nutrition, herbology, homeopathy, um, healing with essential oils. And it became this whole world that I couldn't believe that I was led to. And I delved deeper and deeper into it until it, it literally was my passion. And not only did I start to heal myself through the use of these alternative healing methods and nutrition and diet and uh, exercise and yoga and, you know, all of this wonderful, incredible stuff that we have available to us, but that's not really mainstream. But then I started advising my friends and my family. Somebody would come to me and randomly tell me they had this or they had that. And I would say, gee, you know, I know what you can do for that. Or has your doctor offered you this for that? And they were so intrigued. And I became the go-to person right. in my circle for health and wellness. And long story short, a 25-year journey later, I decided through the influence of a wonderful, wonderful health coach that I worked with to become certified and, and actually pursue this and be a healer. So that's how I'm here today. Wow, what a story. And, you know, um, when, you know, we kind of like share kind of a journey. This is why I say alike. And this is why I say that, because myself, you know, I didn't become a, uh, a, a personal trainer until probably in 2004. Now, of course, that's, you know, a little bit further back, but before all that time, I'm still, you know, so intrigued by what the body can do. Uh, I'm, so I'm showing and sharing, you know, with people that are in the gyms that are, you know, uh, uh, that I can help, you know, what exercises to do for what, you know? So it yeah. was just, it was kind of like a a, a a thing that was just natural for me to do. So I just ease right into this thing of personal training. And then, you know, I said, well, might as well get certified in it. So now, Lyme disease, and you don't really, you don't hear about that often. And, you know, when you do hear it, it's this off in the distance kind of thing, you know, <laughs> no one really, you know, knows how it can impact your life and just really turn your world upside down. And uh, for eight years, that's what you appeared to have been going through. And like I said, I, I you know, no one really knows about it. At least me, I don't really know that much, and I spend a lot of time in the in the in the in the uh, in the uh, bush, woods and uh, the bushes and things like that when I was a kid. Well, two things I could let you and your listeners know about Lyme, which actually has become very mainstream with the internet now and message boards and Facebook. And if you go on and do any kind of a search on it, there are yeah. hundreds of thousands of pages. Wow. But they call Lyme disease is called the great imitator because. It, the, the Lyme is a spherochyte bacteria that gets inside the cells of your body and replicates and stays and hides there. If you wow. catch it within, they say, if you catch it within a week's time and you are on intravenous antibiotics, you can avoid the dissemination process where it, it infiltrates your entire body. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately I did not and many people as well. So then you have a host of symptoms ranging from, uh, from something so minor as muscle twitches to all the way to paralysis. I know people who are in wheelchairs. It affects your mood, your neurochemicals in your brain, brain chemistry. It affects your whole physical body, it, but it mostly impacts your glands and your hormones, um, which is another topic we'll get to. Yeah, so yeah. One, of the, one of the visual indicators of Lyme disease has always been the classic bullseye rash. So they say that in the center of the tick bite, um, you will find um, a, a circular rash that actually looks like a bullseye. So mm -hmm. those are those are two points. Um, you know, if you're if it helps you or yeah, your listen, yeah, yeah, listeners yeah, yeah. to be 
just a little more aware, but it is a very, very widespread issue. Um, and I think more common knowledge now than it was wow. when, I, when I got it, unfortunately. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So Ariel, you know, like you, we thank you for so much for sharing that information. And uh, I, I thank God that you are in my life to uh, share some of that wisdom and that knowledge, my goodness. And some of the technical stuff too, because I'm listening to you sometimes and I'm, I'm like just, Wow, it's amazing. So, you know, and I want to kind of like ask you this next question in the in two parts, in a sense, because uh, the next question that I do have for you is what is a health coach? And if you could give like two types of versions, because there's the dictionary health coach, health coach. And then I want to know the health coach from your perspective. I'd love to share this um, because it took it took some time actually for myself to really truly understand. Um, you know, I'm very academic, as you know. So when I started delving into what is this health coaching business? What does it mean? Is it what I'm already doing? Can I do this? Is it a real profession? Um, you know, you hear the word coach, right? It's the word coach has in our day and age and our time, uh, especially in the last ten years, has become mm -hmm. so broad. It's used. The term is used so widely. You hear. Think about it. We have um, career coach, right? That's a big one. Yeah. Relationship yeah. coach. That's been around since the 70s or beyond. Uh, yeah. You you, ha you have uh, all kinds of coaches, uh, relationship, career, life coach. That's another huge one, which is yeah. very parallel yeah. to the health coach. Yeah. And now the latest to arrive on the scene is the world of health coaching. So I think in its most basic dictionary definition, a health coach is somebody who is a mentor, right, that will work with a client to set goals on how to set to achieve lifestyle changes in the mm -hmm. arena of health typically mm -hmm. so you you come to a health coach uh, looking for that mentorship you know i just came from my doctor's office they gave me this prescription but what else can i do or i'm mm -hmm. having this physical uh this physical issue nobody really seems to know what to do well i'm going to go to a health coach maybe they have inside information so i think that is pretty much a standard view of what yeah, a health yeah. coach does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are basically somebody that is looking to help you set health goals and achieve those goals. Gotcha. Which is which is accurate. That that is true. That is true. But in all honesty, there's so much more to it. And and I see health coaching almost from a, a more spiritual perspective um, than mm -hmm. anything else. Mm -hmm. So so in my experience, a health coaching, and this is also from my training at IIN, yeah. health coaches are considered a guide on the side, not a sage on the stage. That's their little, their little um, catchphrase. <laughs> so yeah. what does that mean? What does that mean? And what does that mean to me? And what does that mean in terms of how I treat clients and people that come to me for help? For me, the definition of health coaching the, is more that you're providing a sacred space for a person to come and open up and be completely vulnerable to you about everything that is affecting their, not just their health of their physical body, but their well-being. And, and what is well-being? It's it's many facets of our life, right? We could have well-being in our physical body, we could help have well-being mentally, we could have well-being in our relationships, our connection to God and spirituality, in our finances, in our careers, it goes on and on. So for me personally, serving as a health coach and being a health coach means treating each person that comes to you as an individual. There's no, you know, cookie cutter stamp process. Oh, here's my program. And, you know, everybody who takes this is great. And then you're on your way. No, everybody's so unique and our stories are unique and our histories are unique, right? From genetics to our experience, to our environment. So when somebody comes to you, it's it's a chance to actually sit down and look at them as a whole person and treat them from a whole very very holistic point of view and very individualistically so okay. what might work for you is not going to work for me or somebody else yeah so for me health coaching is about providing a, a safe space for someone it's a, it's informing them and educating them and making recommendations. So, so in health coaching, right? It, we're not doctors. 
nor do we ever pretend or promote ourselves to be. In fact, many health coaches have disclaimers on what they can and cannot do because it's extremely important to not mislabel yourself and to let your clients realize you are not there to treat a disease or diagnose a disease. You're there to offer recommendations on alternate things that may improve the quality of their life. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I mentioned earlier, I am a supplement specialist. I believe in the power of healing through not only diet, which is very important, but also the use of supplements. And I have firsthand experience on how supplementation changed my life. But I would never tell someone, go take, you know, X, Y, and Z uh, pills and you'll be just like me or you'll be fine. It's a, it's a very kind of exploratory process where you work very gently with someone and tell them that, you know, there's alternative things out there that are good uh, for your body. There are alternative lifestyle that you can lead, um, alternative ways of shopping in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. I used to think that everybody knew this. You know, I started learning about this and I thought, well, everybody knows it. What am I going to tell them that they don't already know? I can mm -hmm. tell you there are so many people that don't even know how to go to a grocery store and read a label and look mm -hmm. at the hidden sugars and the hidden salts and the hydrogenated oils. There is so much that people need to be aware of if they just want to even make the smallest change in their health. But health coaching is wonderful because it allows somebody to come to you set a time and a place, even if it's virtual, and to have a real, a real impact on their life. You, how many times did you feel better and lift your well-being, even just talking to somebody and, yeah, and that person yeah. allowing you to speak, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the most, it's very healing. Yeah. I've always found that it's very healing just to have a safe space to come to someone who's not going to judge you or be angry with you or who's not connected as a personal a person in your circle, but they're so objective and they're just there to listen. So mm -hmm. health coaching in a nutshell for me is providing that space for someone who has a problem or an issue or wants to change and they will come to me and verbalize that and together we'll set goals and work through that. And it's also to keep someone accountable because mm -hmm. you could want to change your life so desperately. Let's say for instance, you want to quit smoking. And you mm -hmm. say, look, I really need to do this. This is killing me. It's my health is suffering. I want to live to be 90 and be with my great grandchildren. I can't stop smoking three packs a day. And you yeah. can, as a coach, it's my responsibility for to set goals with this person who wants to achieve that, right? Yeah. But you have to be accountable. You have to check in. You have to provide exercises and homework. And you have to make sure that you're available to them when, they, when they're faltering. And they need your support, like you do for me, Todd. You've been you've been a little bit of my my coach, my inspirational coach. Um, so so yeah, and I hope that wasn't a, too long of an explanation, but that's how uh, I see it. That was perfect. And a couple of key things, you know, that I want to uh, uh, bring up is the 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 idea of a coach. And I think you know, and we, like you said, we're hearing more and more about it, you know, from relationship coach, you know, coaches, we hear, you know, business coaches and life coaches and all these types of coaches. And, you know, and I think that we can all um, use a coach and or just slash maybe a mentor in our lives. And I don't think a lot of people see the value of having a qualified coach in their lives. Uh, and I do mean qualified, <laughs> uh, having a qualified coach in their lives, uh, because I don't know of too many people that have reached any level of success, be it business, be it uh, uh, health or um, sports, what have you, that didn't have a coach, a personal coach. You know, you have the team coach, but say for, for instance, Tom Brady, football player, everyone knows, um, he has a he has a he has a coach still outside of his the team coach he has someone that's holding him accountable able to see where he's you know off a little bit and course correct that whole thing and so that's that's i think when people understand that that it's not a it's it, to to think that you can do it all by yourself is uh, problematic and i think that's why a lot of us end up falling short of our goals, uh, be it in the world of health, be it in the world of, uh, of uh, you know, business or what have you. And so I always say, you know, 
when you're talking about also accountability, you know, my job as a personal trainer is really to make sure you show up. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 when you have somebody that's waiting for you, and so you got to be at the studio or the gym or what have you at a certain time, and you invest in yourself, okay. And if you don't, if you're not looking at it like a cost kind of thing, but more so an investment of my in, in myself, then you'll show up. And uh, so we be, we are we become very valuable when people see you know, the value that we can add to their lives. And so it wasn't at all, you know, long winded because that's something that, you know, you brought back to me and I'm like saying, yes, you're definitely right about that. The accountability part. And yes, we do have a lot of, you know, different styles of all types of coaches out there. But once again, if you are a qualified coach, then I would say, you know, uh, awesome job. And if you are looking for, um, to achieve something, just understand that hiring a coach is hiring is is also aligning yourself with success. You know, so I mean, your chances of success are much higher when you learn the value of what a coach can offer. So, thank you once again for that answer. Okay. Yeah. No. And I and thank you for the uh, the the, um, the example with Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I have a friend who's a big Tom Brady fan. And, oh um, yes, yes. I've heard him. I've heard Tom Brady speak, and he puts a lot of the points that we're talking about into his speeches. So, yeah. very, very yeah. important. And on one final note is that yeah. how I view coaching. You know, we we all, um, you know, we all benefit right from walking in someone else's sh- shoes, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, mm-hmm. it, it it gives you a perspective on you know where someone's been often people come to you and they feel so unheard and so alone. And yeah. what, what coaching is to me, did you ever see one of those pictures where you see two guys rock climbing and one is on top and the other guy's reaching out his hand yeah. mm-hmm. um, to say, I'm here, you know, grab onto my hand. That, that image comes to my mind when I think of health coaching, because sometimes we feel in a pit of despair where we don't see the light. We don't see the way out. And you reach out to this person who's been there before you, right? They've they've mm-hmm. been in your sh- they've been in your shoes, and they came yeah. out. And they're up there yeah. now, and yeah. they're reaching for you to say, "I we got this. We got this. Yeah. Yeah. You're not yeah. alone." Yeah, uh, I think one of the biggest one of the one of the biggest challenges in our world and in our lives is the feeling of being the feelings of being unheard and being all alone. And if yeah. you could put those two things together and make someone feel listen to and understood you're halfway there because that's what's going to give them the inspiration to move forward and do whatever they have to do to reach where they want to go you are a real coach let me tell you that right now i hope so (laughs) well i'm glad you think so (laughs) you you definitely sound like one so thank you for that you know but now you know the other night ariel you and i were talking and um it was interesting because you know i was when we were speaking, you know, you have, you had a level of power and excitement in your voice and passion when we spoke about the women's wellness advocate part, you know, and that was something I could tell when, when you spoke about that, it was like on fire for you. And so I want to speak on that a little bit right quick and, you know, just share with us what inspired you also, and this is all a part of the coaching thing, but what inspired you to become a a, a women's wellness advocate? And with that, what do you hope to achieve? I love this question because, you know, I love this topic and it is, it is a deep passion of mine. Yeah. Uh, So while Lyme disease led me to the world of alternative medicine and, and, and holistic healing, the next part of my life, uh, my mid, approaching midlife affected the, becoming a, will, a women's wellness advocate. So what do I mean by that? Well, in my 40s, I started experiencing extreme hormonal changes in my body due to perimenopause, which mm-hmm. I found um, women, obviously women go through the transition of life mm-hmm. and you know they lose their menstruation and their hormones change. And um, 
even today in 2021, it seems like this taboo topic that nobody can talk about. Or yeah. if you try to ask somebody about it, they all shut down, even in doctor's offices, which is the biggest issue I had with experiencing severe perimenopause myself, going from doctor to doctor and trying to be properly addressed and and helped assisted you know this is a serious thing this is affecting my whole life how can you help me i found that women are often and not to be not to sound politically incorrect because i know today's day and age everybody is inclusive and we're trying to support communities much more than we ever have yeah. but i do feel i passionately still feel and i have evidence of this mm -hmm that women's voices, especially when it comes to their bodies and their health, we are still not heard. We are not being listened to. We are not being respected in certain areas of our health. And for myself, one of those areas was going into the menopause transition, going through perimenopause. It was an unexpected experience where my entire life, my physiology, my, my mental capacity, my cognitive functioning, all of it changed. And I would go into a doctor's office, even a trained doctor, like a gynecologist, and sit down and tell them, I can't think straight anymore. I feel horrible every day. Um, you know, my, my, physically, everything's falling apart. And I would hear, you're too young for menopause. It's all in your head. Mm -hmm. You just need some anti-anxiety medication and everything will be okay. Now, sometimes some of those are true. But I can tell you, Todd, 90% of the times, that's not true. Right. I spent the better part of the last 10 years collecting uh, responses and speaking to women on Facebook pages and internet message boards. I can tell you there are tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of women that are horribly going through this transition horribly, and they're uninformed, they're uneducated, they've been mm -hmm. to, they've, they've bankrupted themselves. I mean, I've talked mm -hmm. to women who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to find out what was medically wrong with them, when all they needed was someone to balance their hormones, which is not, mm -hmm. it's an easy thing to say, it's not an easy thing to accomplish. But what really affected me was that they were never heard. They were dismissed one after another. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel that I would like to be or be part of a movement for women in, in this day and age to be a voice for women, to, mm -hmm. to speak out on this topic as often uh, and as many times as I can in many different places that I can, whether it's in-person seminars or doing it virtually or creating a webinar series, it's my passion to, to, to reach out to women that are right now, right now, their lives are falling apart, their marriages are ending, um, they're, they're bedridden, they don't know how to get out of a bed and say, I know what's wrong, I can help you. There are doctors that will help you, I wanna lead you to those right people because it really is a very, very challenging time for some women, mm -hmm. not all women, some women are become very, very, very ill through perimenopause and menopause, and some of them never even regain the quality of their life. You know, mm -hmm. you hear about menopause and you think, oh, it's hot flashes and yeah. you'll get over yeah. it. And here, yeah. slap on this, uh, this uh, climara patch and you'll be good to go. I can tell you, there are some people that have chronological issues and diseases and illnesses that lay a foundation for when that hormonal change happens, your entire life will stop on a dime. And I myself felt like I was leveled through that hormone, hormonal time because mm -hmm. I was dealing with the remnants of the Lyme disease and other immune system mm -hmm. issues. So it all builds on itself. Um, and like, we're like just a house of cards and we can fall. So yes, I am uh, very much for women, <laughs> women's yeah. wellness yeah. And, yeah. and very passionate about this topic, especially where it relates to hormone balance. Yeah. And it's, it, it's my biggest heart's desire to even if I helped one woman to change her life going through this and to heal and to come out through the other side, uh, mm -hmm. I would I would feel like my mission was accomplished. So thank right. you for bringing up that question. Yeah, you know, and that's important because you know, uh, with what I do, Ariel, um, I've had I've had quite a few women, you know, uh, um, seek me out for personal training, and they were dealing with hormonal issues such as. Uh, as I like to call it, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. And, uh, you know, so they were dealing with these issues and, you know, it was, you know, 
coming from a male's perspective, and we spoke about this a little, you know, the other night, you know, it's not just you ladies that are going through hormonal issues, you know, as men, we go through, hormonal, you know, imbalances also, but I don't think I will ever know what it's like to deal with polycystic ovarian syndrome, you know, <laughs> so, but, but like I said, I, I, I have these women, you know, coming to me, and they're, they're trying to lose weight, and the, the scale is just not moving, or the weight is just not coming off, and they've tried everything they've tried everything and so you know uh the whole thing comes down to um getting those hormones in check and so uh there was a young lady that um i just recently uh, uh met and um beginning to work with her and all of the things that she was mentioning you know to me with regards to a struggle to lose weight you know, sounded as if she was dealing with some hormonal imbalances. And bottom line, you know, yes, yeah, she's 45 years of age. So she's right in that space where, oh, yeah. the, you know, things start to kind of like go a little bit nuts. And so, um, but she wasn't aware that it could be anything hormone related. Really? You know? and it, yeah, wow. no, she wasn't really aware. And so, you know, I just suggested, you know, listen, when you go on, you know, to your next uh, appointment, you know, have your doctor definitely check your hormones and see where, you know, where things are, um, because that might be, you know, what the issue is, you know. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's the case for many, many women um, mm -hmm. that they, they are. And it surprises me every time I hear that because it's been so much a part of my life for the past 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'm so aware of everything about, about the topic. Um, but there are still ladies and there are, there are generations behind me that are in their 20s, 30s, they're clueless. And then they're going to hit 40 and go, oh my God, what is this? Like yeah. they're being hit by a freight train. And like I said, um, it's very important to understand it doesn't happen for everyone, but there's the group of people that are suffering and struggling that it does happen. And some of them that don't even know. So that's why yeah. it's just an important yeah. topic to bring yeah. to awareness. It, it, it really is. It really is. So, you know, another another area of life, you know, and this is can be related to hormones too. And, you know, and a lot of people, in, especially in this day and age now, we are dealing with so much information overload. Uh, everything's coming at us and, you know, we are challenged with trying to figure out what to do with all of this information, be it yes. negative or positive, but most of it seems to be negative at this time. Um, what do we do with this? Because all of this stuff seems to be causing high stress levels. And, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, I would love as a health coach, you know, for you to share a little bit about, you know, you know, what is stress, you know, are, are, are the different types of stresses and, you know, what does it do to the body? <laughs> oh my goodness, Todd, we can, we need like a whole two hour show. On yeah, ex the topic exactly. Of <laughs> well, we're going to be coming back because, you know, you're not done. <laughs> no, I'm not done. Oh my goodness. I had, there's so much more. Oh my God. I, I don't think there's a single person alive today. Um, in light of the last two years, especially of what's happened to the world. Yeah. That yes. is not experiencing stress. You know, <laughs> stress, that's, it's like a catch-all for everything, yeah. you know, yeah. so stress, yeah. what is stress? So to me, so stress from a yeah. dictionary standpoint yeah, can exactly. be defined as, okay, so any type of change, right, that causes a physical, emotional, or psychological strain on the body, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a change that's going to cause a situation for the body to react often negatively. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody knows this, but most people know that we, we were wired from, you know, eons ago to have our adrenal glands shoot out cortisol when there was a perceived threat coming at us. And they use the example of, you know, a tiger is running at you back yeah. in the day and your adrenals shoot out cortisol and adrenaline and it allows your body to run and get the heck out of there. Mm -hmm. But that was an evolutionary process that kept people and human that kept humans alive, right? Now in today's day and age, the body is not deciphering from a tiger or your angry boss or your mm -hmm. spouse that is threatening to leave you or um, you know a physical uh, accident in the street or COVID nineteen, 
right? Or watching the news. <laughs> All of these horrible things that are threatening us 24 seven now with access to life on virtually 24 seven, we're plugged into 24 seven uh, news streams of all the crazy, terrible things happening. We're completely bombarded, bombarded with stress, with your body going into the fight or flight mode and your adrenal glands constantly pushing out that cortisol to say, oh my God, we got to run. We got to get out of here. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're really being chased by a tiger or you're just watching something on the news going, oh my God. It mm -hmm. all does the same damage to our body and we're all mm -hmm. subject to it right now. And we're all dealing with it right now. Yeah. For me personally, stress has always been the result of forcing my mind and body to do something that went against my inner wisdom, that went against my inner flow of this is not what I want to do, but I'm going to, I'm going to brave it out. And I'm going to force myself. Now, I don't mean taking a, you know, doing something that's almost thrilling, like getting up on stage and performing a, a musical number. We are, we all have adrenaline running in those situations. Yeah. 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 Or, um, you know, do having a new, you know, having a new job, starting a new job mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and the thrill of that causes some stress mm -hmm. and excitement. I'm talking about, constantly saying yes to people that you should say no to and mm. you're running on empty internally i'm talking about um being in a relationship where you're either emotionally abused or physically threatened or the person is just a toxic person they're not right for you but you're staying there same thing with the job um same thing with a living environment you know you could be in a in a, in a house with neighbors that are uh threatening or not nice people whatever it is and you force yourself to continue this path and you don't even know why, but it's just you're, you're on autopilot. Those, for me, those are the most serious ways that stress will actually, could actually kill you. They say stress kills. That's not a joke. I'm not yeah. to be dramatic, but stress, the effect of nonstop running adrenaline and cortisol on the human body, and most of your listeners know this, right? What does it do? It increases your heart rate. It increases your blood pressure. It, um, it, it circulates a whole bunch of inflammatory um, enzymes and hormones throughout your body that your body doesn't, over time, your body doesn't know how to respond to. And what starts to happen? The breakdown of your, of your circulatory system, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, it could lead to so many terrible, terrible things, even depression. Mm -hmm. It yeah. can yes. deeply impact emotions yeah. stress yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so stress is definitely something that we all need to manage um if not we can't we obviously we can't eliminate stress but there are really effective wonderful things you can do for your body to exist to coexist in a world yeah. where we are surrounded by issues that will cause us stress, but right. we can manage that. We can. And that's, yeah. that's a very, that's another passionate thing of mine that I, yeah. I love to share with others. Yeah. Like I said, this is not going to be the last time, you know, you're, you're going to be a guest on, on this platform here. Uh, like I said, because we have so much to uh, speak about. Yes. It just relates to stress because this is something that, you know, I highlight, you know, in my business too, you know, what does a person's lifestyle look like? Uh, because of course we know stress can impact your sleep habits. It can oh impact your, your, your eating habits, all of these things, you know, you might be that person that's eating um, and, and I, I shared this uh, one time before, you know, when you're stressed out and you, you, you need that comfort food, your comfort food is more than likely not going to be an apple. Okay. So you're going to run somewhere that you want to, you want to taste and you want to feel good. Like, oh my God, this chocolate cake is just the absolute best. Now I feel you know, a little better. Now that sugar in that triggers those, you know, feel good hormones and you, you know, you dip back down into that stress thing again, and then you run to that feel good cake. So it's a cycle of just never ending uh, uh, havoc <laughs> on the body. Yes. And, and, and so the whole thing is, you know, how do we get off, you know, that, that treadmill, how do we get off that merry-go-round? And uh, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm we've, sure we've, we've all been there. My goodness. You know, if you haven't been there, then you haven't, you haven't lived. <laughs> Absolutely. So, 
And so they say, you know, we, they say, if you're not stressed out, if, if you're not, if you don't have stress in your life, you're not breathing. And, and I think that that's <laughs> exactly. true. You know, so, you know, so, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, one thing after the other, but, you know, yeah. like I said, you know, when it gets to be to the point where your health is, is suffering because of it, then yeah, it's, it's definitely time, you know, to, uh, to take care of that. So, you know, Ariel, as we, as we come in, you know, for landing here, you know, uh, I would love to know, you know, what's in the future for your health coaching business, my God, because like I say, you have so much to offer. And I know people are just going, to, I know people are just being so empowered and so encouraged by you. And so I know that I am. Every time I talk to you, we talk about your knowledge and you, you share with me, I know I'm like, wow, you know, I am amazed. So I would love to know what's in the store, what's in store for you in the future with regards to your health coaching business. Well, thank you, Todd. And I'm glad I'm a source of inspiration for yourself as well. Yes. Um, so, oh my goodness, I have so many things in store. Just so everyone is aware, I have been health coaching for at least 25 years, but I've mm. only officially been on the scene in terms of having somewhat of a professional presence and starting to build uh, an official professional practice in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. So I have lots of great plans and I hope everyone stays tuned. Of course, I'm going to continue to help seek out and help my clientele. And those, those people largely include women who are suffering with hormonal imbalance, stress-related issues and stress management needs, as Todd and I just discussed, and also immune system health, which is another yeah. huge, huge topic for me. Yeah. Um, and, and I've spent a lot of time researching and discovering ways to uh, build the body, which I build the body's strengths against viruses and bacteria and, and all immune related illnesses, which is very mm. close to my heart as well. Wow. Um, but also what I, what I would love to do, um, and it's up and coming is I'd like to have a webinar series where once a month I will get on a webinar through zoom and we'll do like an hour topic, uh, based off of maybe a survey that I send out, uh, and, uh, see what's what's happening with my clients and or other reaches out into the Facebook space to see, you know, what people are really in need of hearing about. Yeah. And yeah. I would love to do that a free webinar series just for informational and educational purposes. Awesome. On top of that, maybe a course might be down the line. But but honestly, my, my baby that's in the works is I'm writing a book on oh. uh, on the perimenopause journey. That is a very, it's almost like a memoir and it's a very personal reference. Of, of one woman's journey and what she did to find her life again and to yeah. let other women know oh, you can yeah. too. And that I've been, um, you know, it's been in the works for several months and maybe I would like to say maybe within two years, that will be a, a published, uh, a published uh, work of mine. So, yeah, so I'm out there. And of course, Todd, coming back and talking with you and your listeners, I'm so excited. Man, I, you know, I, I can't, I'm going to hold you to that book. Okay, oh. and I'm gonna make sure you get that out. And you got so, it. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure you do that. Yeah, and just a little bit about what I'm doing is that I'm obviously I I, I read and I research. I'm a very big uh, book and internet uh, researcher. I read any material I can um, to self-educate on top of my academic studies, and. Oftentimes, when I'm flipping through books on women's hormonal health, they, they, there are huge, huge areas that I have gone through, that I've talked to thousands of women that have gone through, and they're not addressed in these books by, by high-profile you know, high doctors and authors. So I said, you know what? There's a need here for this yeah. to be talked about, and yeah. I'm going to provide it. There's so hopefully, and hopefully once my, my book comes out, there are, there are other stories out there and those women will write or, you know, make public their stories as well. And together we'll create this ripple effect and we will usher in healing, healing in this world. That's what we need. Wow. That's what we need. You know, I uh, always say there's a book inside of all of us. <laughs> you know, so Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm thank, thank, thankful that you have uh, been inspired to uh, uh, become aware of that. And that there is a book inside of you and there's a gap to be filled. Like you said, you know, you read all this information, but wait a minute, why aren't they talking about this? There's a gap here. So yes. thankful that you are going to be able to fill that gap. And also, once again, where can uh, people find you? Because that's important now that they've heard you. 
Yes. Okay. So my sites are still fledgling. They're not, they're, they don't look as polished as they could, but you can still reach me there and you can reach out to me there. And I would love to talk to anybody who heard our conversation today and is in need of health coaching on any of the topics we discussed or even other topics, because my health coaching doesn't stop at women's health or immune health or stress. Uh, there, there are lots of areas in people's lives that need healing, and I would love to offer you that safe space. So the two areas as of now you can find me are on Facebook. If you type in the search bar, Living Well with Ariel, and that's spelled A-R-I-E-L. That's my Facebook page. And also, most recently, on heal.me. So that's H-E-A-L dot M-E. It's a website that offers a, a, a 10,000 practitioners, wellness practitioners on everything from <clears throat> energy medicine to health coaching to, um, you know, sound healers, people that work with all kinds of modalities and heal all kinds of things. So you can look for me and many other practitioners on there as well. So I look forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. Ariel, I have one last question for you right quick. Okay. And that is... Um, the big question of the evening or the afternoon or the morning or wherever you uh -oh. are. <laughs> no. So, um, you know, the question I do have, if you, if you could change the world for a better, you know, for a better, you know, world today, what one thing would you do? Oh, wow. That's definitely a, a yeah. top. That, we could even have another show on that topic. Yeah, we can have another show on that one, right? Well, I would, it comes down to, um, as we talked about, Todd, a little bit earlier today, that two, there are two things in the world that I, I feel that people need more than anything, that the world needs more than anything. One is for each person to be heard and to be made to feel understood by another wow. person. Wow. That is, to me, if you took away all the vitamins and the diets and the pills in the world and you just let somebody be heard and understood, I think that could usher in the most profound healing experience. So what I would do, or what I would like to do to change the world for the better is to, to be that voice, even if I could be the voice for one person um, and effectively inspire a change in their life um, and, and let them know they're heard and understood and it will get better that's what I would love to do wow. and create that ripple effect across the world. Ariel, thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, I, thank you, Todd. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I was so happy to be a part of your podcast and I yes. look forward to being a, for a guest in the future. Definitely. Wow. Thank you so much. Everyone listen, I, I, you know, this is why I love, you know, listening to this lady because she, like I said, she just brings so much knowledge and just, such care and I and I always I'm, I'm I just came across that the other day I'll be honest with you you know you can be a knowledgeable coach but when you can bring the heart and the care to that knowledge then wow the world can be changed and everything everything so wow thank you so much once again so everybody listen reach out to this lady okay reach out to her you know and uh um if you're having these issues, health issues, this lady can definitely work. It is so, so passionate about what she does in helping people. So reach out to her. So everyone, thank you so much again for hanging out with us on Living Your Best Life. And uh, I just I just hope that somebody got blessed by this, this information this afternoon and um, can start to create that desire to live their best lives. So once again, everybody, thank you so much. And we will definitely be catching you on the next episode. You guys take care and have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye. Thank you.